Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 5, Control Flow Loops. In this video, we'll be learning how to repeat sections of code. Every video have all slideshows and code available in the description. Computers are really good at repeating instructions. Using what we learnt from last tutorial on true and false expressions, or what are technically called Boolean expressions, let's start with the last concept of control flow, looping. Before we dive straight in, let's take a few moments to learn two really useful operators increment and decrement. These operators are shorthand for adding one to a number or subtracting one from a number. In the example here, we look at x++ is the same as x equals x plus 1. Similarly, x minus minus is the same as x equals x minus 1. This will come in handy in a sec. The for loop is used when we want to loop over a section of code a specific number of times. A for loop will loop until its condition is false just like an if won't run its code if it is false. The loop structure follows the pattern iteration variable with a value, which in this case is i equals zero. Compare it to its finished condition, so here we are saying loop until i is no longer less than 10. Then finally we increment it. Using our new operator friend, plus plus, we increase i by one at the end of each loop. In this example, we just pop up the value of i, which we should expect to see 10 pop-ups from 0 to 9 in them because our loop finishes when i is equal to 10. Alright, let's build a script that gets the sum of all numbers up to a specified number. This is, it adds 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 etc all the way up to a certain number. Let's call it sum.html. We'll reuse the template from our earlier add example. Alright, so we'll come over here and we'll open up add.html in our text editor. And I'll save it as a new file, calling it sum. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove our second number that we're going to get from the user because we're not going to get it. We'll remove num1 and just call it num because we only want one number from the user. Then we'll come down to our HTML and we'll remove the number two. And we'll just ask for a number and we'll, the ID will just be num. So when they press the button, we'll change that so it's called run rather than equals. So they put in a number, they hit run, and then up in our script, we're going to get the number that they inputted. We're going to create a variable called sum, and we'll make that equal zero to start with, which is what we're going to store the result in. Now we're going to create a for loop to calculate the sum of all of the numbers up to that specified number. So we'll do for, then inside brackets, we'll create a variable i, which can equal one to start with. And we're going to go until i is less than or equal to the number inputted. So we're going to go through all of the numbers up to the number they inputted. And then we're going to increment i after each loop. All right. So inside our Kelly braces, we're going to do sum equals sum plus i. And because i will be incremented each time, it'll be 1, and then it will be 2, and then it'll be 3, all the way up to the number that's inputted, and that will add on to the current value of sum. Awesome, now that we've got sum, we're going to set our inner HTML to sum, which is going to be the end result. Now we can save this and load it into our web page. We'll zoom in a bit. All right, now we can put in a number, so let's do something like 10. And we hit run and we get 55. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to 10. It gives us a total sum of 55. We can put in something like 100 and we get uh, 5050. Cool. So we can do all sorts of numbers and we can find out what the addition is of all of those numbers up to that number. Awesome. To make our life even easier, JavaScript has shorthand for every arithmetic operator. Here we can see by placing the arithmetic operator before the equal sign causes it to add, subtract, multiply, or divide onto the variable it's setting. This will save us a lot of space when our code starts getting bigger. Next, we have while loops. While loops are used when we are less certain about how many times we need to loop. In the last for example, we knew exactly what our final number to stop at was, because it was entered by the user. There is two styles of writing a while loop. 
the standard while, like we can see here on the left, which checks at the start if it should run the code in the loop. And we have the do while, which will run the code in the loop at least once before checking if it should run the code again. So in these examples, depending on what the value of x is, we can have two different effects. If x is 15, then the loop on the left will not run because x is not less than 10. However, on the right, the do while, x will be changed to 16 before the loop finishes, because the loop is always run at least once. Alright, let's create a script that uses a while loop to output the remainder of a whole number divided by 7. Normally, we would solve this with the modulus operator, but because we are learning how to use while loops, let's try to solve this ourselves. Let's call this one remainder.html. Alright, so we'll open up our sum again and we'll say this as, and we'll call it remainder. All right, in our remainder, what we're going to do is we'll rename some variables. So we'll rename sum to result, and result is going to equal the num inputted by the user. Now we'll get rid of our for loop. All right, now to get the remainder of a number, we need to have the total number that we want to uh, divide by, and then to divide, instead of actually using the divide operator, we're going to minus the number we're dividing by. And we're going to keep minusing until we can't minus anymore. And that means we've got our remainder. All right, so let's create a while loop. So while our result is greater than or equal to 7, because we're d dividing by 7, we want to minus 7 each time. So while our result is greater than or equal to 7, then we can still continue dividing. So our result is going to minus equal 7. So we're going to take 7 away each time we loop over. And if our result falls below 7, then we don't need to minus 7 anymore because we'll have our final result. So let's, uh, let's actually, you know what, let's put in a document output so we can see the changes. So let's plus equals on our inner HTML to append data onto our web page, and we'll output uh, the result plus, and then we'll add the string of the HTML line break. Cool, and then at, uh, at the very end, we'll plus equals our, our final result, except we'll do the string answer, answer colon plus the result. And then we finally finish that line off. Let's save that. And let's give it a shot. So if we drag that in to our browser, we can type in a number. So let's say we put in eight, which if that's divided by seven uh, as a whole number, then we should get a remain remainder of one because there'll be one left over. Yep. Uh, let's we can try some larger number. So we could do something like uh, 56. Oh, no, let's not do 56 because that is division. No, it's division dividable by 7. So we can see that 56 minus 7 is 49, 42, 35, 28, 21, 14, 7, 0. So the remainder of dividing 56 by 7 is 0. If we were to change it to something like 148 and we run that, we'll see that we have... Whoop, We'll just refresh to clear that up. 148, we get 141 all the way down, going down, and we get a result of one. Cool. Have a try at allowing the user to specify what to divide by instead of only seven. Just some final notes to keep in mind when working with loops. Make sure your loop always has a way of finishing or exiting. If your loop can never end, it is called an infinite loop and will probably crash your browser or your tab. The for loop I illustrated in this lesson was the most common form. However, JavaScript allows for for loops to be manipulated in many ways. For example, semicolon x is greater than 10 semicolon works just like a while loop, but it's much less clear of what it's doing. This concludes our look at different types of loops in JavaScript. Next, we'll be tackling functions. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.